as you can see here I have a small container of Swiss chard you can direct seed it or you can just do what I'm doing here today they grow in it in a uh, pot and just take a spoon oh, that was not too strong take a whole claw. I'm going to thin them all to one so I don't care if I lose any let's go into the ground boom like that there you go and it's done it's not that complicated now you only want one within about 18 inches of the other one so you, uh, bring the camera down here Kurt. you can see I have a bunch there I'm just going to have to thin them out to one simple as that cool so that was a little chard transplant. We're gonna give you a little garden update today. It's a little after nine. It's still like 33 degrees. So it's still pretty cool out. Um, cold. <laughs> but right here we have our garlics. Hello, Philadelphia. Coming up with some grass clippings here. I'm taking a shot of Philadelphia the cat. Where's the cat at? It's behind there, it's coming in. Now this is the this is the cat that takes care of all the moles. Moles, baby groundhog, or well, all groundhogs basically. We haven't seen any this year. And um, mice, anything else? LA calls them Philadelphia. Call Philadelphia. <laughs> that cat called Philadelphia. Coyote got him. I don't know where he's at now. Okay, so what else we got going on? Can you explain this uh, little system you have over here for the pests? We have beets and carrots in this, in this line here. Show them the line. All the way up and down in between the garlic. And just to make sure that the birds are not eating the seed and the seed is good, we put little containers over them, trays. So we'll know if the birds are eating the seeds or not because they won't be able to get to the seeds underneath the tray. Pretty simplistic. Cool. There's a cat right there. Hey, Philly. Alright, now we're going to uncover some tomato plants. Yes, we are. But it's cold. It is kind of cold, but they got they, they got direct sunlight, though, so My it should be good. already becoming raw. We haven't really gotten into the season yet. We're always about a month to six weeks behind the rest of the state here in, in McKean County as far as warmth goes. So I'm going to use gloves. You know the tomato igloos from the Kurt Cummins video on Who's tomato that? igloos. Alright, here we go. Kurt Nicholas. How many you got in here? Well, about. These are the orange tomatoes that nobody will grow for us. They want our ratatouille, our early, or our cherry tomato. And we had a mutation last year, similar to the one that you'll find in the Hibernian Mysteries Part Part Six. So I want to grow them. To see what they come out as and nobody wants them so I snuck four in before this cool. garden really gets busy and by the time they start throwing off tomatoes nobody's going to notice the difference but uh people will start staff will start letting me have it if they know I'm wasting space on orange tomatoes that nobody wants <laughs> when we have every tomato sold this year anyway but I figure in the interest of science, it has to be done. By the time you see this video, it'll be too late. Here's another orange one. There's a little bottle of horn silica I like to put next to some of them. I'm not sure of the results, but it does absorb light. And if you come over here, Uh, before I bury our horn with the horn silica in it, I like to leave it next to the tomato plant. This is uh, horn silica. 
that you know from Atlantis, Ireland, the Iron Horn, Silico, and Rotherain.com. Now, what's that used for? We spray it on plants and it absorbs extraordinary amounts of light and transfers that to the plant when we spray it on the plant. Cool. Read Atlantis Island, the Iron Horn, Silico, and Rotherain.com and read a teal of two tomatoes on rotherain.com if you want to learn some real good tricks with this horn silica a teal of two tomatoes on rotherain.com would be what you want to go to yeah I'll post a couple links to that which one the horn silica or the uh... every one you've mentioned so far okay well I think they should start with tell them not me I think you should start with a teal of two tomatoes okay what else can we show them today in the garden? More your... Do I take a break and analyze last night's results? I'm trying to figure certain things out here. Okay. So there's a small garden update. And uh, we'll get more to you soon, guys. Thanks. We had an unusual occurrence here on Elm Street last night. We actually lost a couple can't the really. baby Swiss chard. Can you see that? Yeah, right there. Right Swiss, here? Yeah. Swiss chard does not normally freeze. It's cold resistant, but it must have gotten so cold last night. Show them the frost over here, Kurt. Yeah, it's still in the shadow right here, but you can see the frost. It got so cold it was probably strong enough to kill the baby Swiss chard. Now, how come you don't let those Swiss chard get any bigger before you transplant them into the ground? I usually do, but I want to get them out of the way early. I see. You want to explain the garlic thing? Uh, we thought that the milk that we watered them with this winter had hurt their roots and killed them, but we know that's not true now because here we have th we've lost three garlic here that were not watered with milk. And come on over here first. This is very important. One, two, three. All watered with milk are coming up. That one's just got broken off, but it's starting right in there. And of these three, come on over here. Keep the camera on the hill. One, two, three. These were not watered with milk, and we lost one here. So the three that were watered with milk did come up, and one of the ones that we didn't water with milk from the three did not come up. So we're going to do the experiment again this fall and this winter with the milk, aren't we, Kurt? Sure. Okay. Let's take a break. Ready for it. You want to show them the ones we are watering with milk? Yeah. All right, uh, camera. <laughs> We're picking four elephant garlic to water with milk to see if we can see a difference. This one. This big one here. Right. That one over there. And most of the milk is RSBT free. Free. RSBT free, correct. Um, no hormones. Yeah, it's still pasteurized, no but. Hormones. And we've chosen these two over here. Wow. These are being watered with the milk also. And that one is not. Look. So look at the difference in the leaves, but you can't go by the leaves. It's the head we're interested in, and the garlic. So you're not really going to be able to tell until you dig them up. Got that right. So that's a little garlic slash milk experiment, garlic nutrition experiment. We'll do a good experiment for you this fall and winter with the milk or the garlic. And the only reason why we're doing it is because the got store throws away their bad milk and they'd rather give it to us to turn into food. Yep. So it's a good way not to waste. Yes. But um Go charge your Yeah, we'll give you we'll give you more uh, updates on the on the garlic and milk nutrition soon. Thanks guys.